In today's post-production video, we're gonna talk about my five favorite effects in Adobe Premiere. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. So in this video, we're gonna talk about my five favorite effects in Adobe Premiere. So these five effects that I call my favorite are pretty much very practical and effects that you can use in almost every project depending on if you're facing that situation. Uh, a lot of the other effects in Adobe Premiere that are not on this list, in my opinion, are more creative type, you know, video effects that, you know, will either work or won't work. These five effects will always work when you use them correctly. But anyway, before we jump into my five favorite effects, this video is brought to you by PremiumBeat.com. Premium Beat is a royalty-free music provider for your creative video and motion graphic projects. They have an extremely popular library with thousands of songs to choose from. And they have a very easy in-depth search and menu filter system so you can quickly find the best songs for your video. Also, with purchasing a soundtrack for your next project, each song allows you to choose from the full track, loop sets, and even shorter variations of the song to make sure every song fits the duration of your project. So for your next video project, be sure to check out premiumbeat.com to get your royalty-free music. So let's go ahead and start off this list with an effect that we will all probably use, and that is Warp Stabilizer. So there's a lot of times where a clips will have camera shake like this one, and we want to remove it and make it look like it was shot a little bit more stable without that camera shake movement to it. So, so we fix this by using an effect called Warp Stabilizer. You may already be familiar with it, but it's a pretty much an easy effect to use. So you come over here and you can find the Warp Stabilizer underneath the Distort tab and you can bring it onto your clip. And it'll automatically analyze your clip and start stabilizing it. And this is where you can just take a nap. And now here's our clip with Warp Stabilizer applied. For clips that are not incredibly shaky, this works fine. Uh, but you know, if you need no motion, you can set it to no motion completely, or you can even lower down the smoothness if it's distorting by too much. So Warp Stabilizer is an effect that we'll all practically use, but for our next effect on our list, we're gonna use something even better. Crop? Who uses crop? It's a great effect. Let's go ahead and check it out. <sighs> all right, I wasn't joking. I really do like the crop effect, and here it is. And what I like about this specifically is it allows you to easily reframe objects. So if you say you're doing like a split screen effect, this is a really good effect to work with, which is the crop. So for example, if I come here and I can move my clip over to the right side, and then again, I can bring my another clip underneath it. So I can start creating the split screen here. But the problem is it's harder to work like this. So for example, I can grab my crop effect here and crop the left side of my image. And we can start seeing the other image a little bit better and then reposition the bottom image exactly where it needs to be. And without that crop effect, we wouldn't have been able to put together a very nice split screen effect like this. Um, and obviously you can crop left, right, top, and bottom. It's just a crop effect. And it's very useful to use when you use it in this sort of situation. So as you can see, crop is something that you may use often and is a very practical effect. So next up on our list is something you can use a little bit more creatively and that's the camera blur while using masks. All right, so the next effect on our list is the camera blur, and I really like this effect specifically when you use it with a mask. So right off the bat, you get a 25% blur, and you can you know blur it up or whatever. But what I like about this, we can grab say the pen tool right here, and you know we can draw out a mask around our subject. So let's turn on this effect real quick, and I want to keep my area around uh, our talent here in focus. So I'll just do a rough mask like this, and then I'll turn our effect back on, and we'll click on inverted for a mask. And we'll increase the mask feather by a lot. And then we'll go back into our effect. And maybe we'll bring this down to 10. And it's overall a very nice effect to apply. So a little before and after. You can see this becomes a little bit you know, more blurred out. And it draws focus into our talent. And it's a really cool you know, artistic. But also can be a very practical effect to use. Uh, among all the effects inside of Adobe Premiere. So camera blur can be used very creatively, but the next up on our list, we're gonna talk about something else that's very practical and something that you should definitely use when it comes to color correction. And it's the most valuable color correction effect inside Adobe Premiere. And I really wanna call it color correction effects, but simply it's Lumetri color and has all the properties you need to apply proper color correction. So next up on our list is Lumetri color and I found the most embarrassing frame ever. So we'll go with that. So we can grab Lumetri color and apply it as an effect. Now, of course you apply as effect you have all your basic controls, but what you can do is come here to the top and click on the color tab. 
and Lumetri color will be in its own user interface because this is a great color correction effect. And then you can also click on Lumetri scopes over here, go to window Lumetri scopes, and you'll get some extra data here, but we're not gonna focus on color correction this video, but you can also use the effect over here. And this is the primary color correction effect inside of Adobe Premiere. So I can quickly increase the contrast of this clip, you know, really get started here, increase the saturation if I have to, and change the color temperature. And we can start color correcting, you know, this clip and getting ready to go. And essentially we can use the very basic effects in the color correction tab to start building out our color corrections and working with what we have. And then you have all your other effects from like say curve adjustments which are great if you want that further control for color correction. You also have your color wheel so you can start grading your clip. You have your HSL secondary where you can select specific colors in your shot and color correct them individually. So, And we also have a vignette where we can start crunching in on the corners and centering in our focus. Lastly on our list and it's number 5 and it's probably my favorite effect of all time. And you guys are probably not going to believe it. And you're probably like, this list has no credibility. It's terrible. But my favorite effect of all time is noise. Let me show you why. And yes, we're using noise. And I wasn't joking. It's under the noise and grain folder. Bring it into your clip. And the noise effect is really good when you're working with, say, motion graphics inside of Premiere. Maybe you're building out titles. Or you bring in, you know, assets from After Effects. And just adding noise to blend it in with your footage is really awesome. So just by increasing the noise just by a little bit to maybe 5%, maybe a little bit larger depending on the resolution of what you're working with. And uncheck and use color noise is also a good effect. So for a little before and after, you see without the noise, it's a very static clip. But with it, you know, it adds a nice little touch of grain to it as if it's shot on video. So for example, so for example, if I move into this clip, say 400%, you'll see that there's actually noise in that just like there was in this motion graphic. Whereas before, if we didn't have this noise in the motion graphic, it wouldn't be similar to video um, and it wouldn't blend as well. Uh, just my opinion, a little nice touch that I like to put on motion graphics is adding noise to make it blend well with the video. So just a cool little technique to make things look a little bit more consistent. So those are my five favorite effects in Adobe Premiere. They all have some sort of practical use to me. That's why I like them compared to a lot of the other effects in Adobe Premiere, which I think are more creative type effects, at least from my perspective. Uh, however, I hope you guys did enjoy this video and took away some cool information from it. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sunduck Film. We post two post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the video description and always be creating.